praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. So glad to be with you again tonight. It is our last night. Can you believe it? Three weeks have passed that quick. My name is Pastor Cable Brown. I'm the assistant pastor here at Shadow Baptist Church, where I serve along with my, my brother, my friend, the senior pastor, Dr. Uh, brother Dr. James Duncans, and we just appreciate you being here with us uh, during our Bible study night. You're here with us during our inspiration moments. You're here with us on Sunday morning service when it's Sunday live, and we're just so grateful for these past two plus years the way things are going right now and how you've been so faithful. We thank you for hitting the like button, you're, you're sending out uh, notes, messages, and everything, and, and making comments and stuff like that. We appreciate it. We really do. That makes a difference. It makes us realize that we're actually doing what God called us to do in times like this. This type of service is needed. And we hope that you're growing. We hope that what you heard in the past couple of weeks will help you along the way. Uh, we're about to get into this. Amen. We're about to talk about setting boundaries. Remember, we're talking about how to deal with difficult people without becoming difficult ourselves, without becoming one ourselves. And the primary thing we're focusing on is that we don't turn into people who we dislike. Amen? So, but before I go there, I do have a special thing I want to say. Today is February 16th, 2022. And it's, today is my wife's birthday. I want to say, honey, I love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. She's here, she's here y'all, so she's back there making all kinds of motions and stuff like that. But uh, I just wanna I just wanna say I thank God for her. She's my friend and my my ride or die. So, you know, uh, it's always good to have somebody in your corner, amen. So happy birthday. And y'all send a shout out to her. Let her know that you appreciate her. Amen. All right. So now let's 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 get started. Let's, before we do, we're gonna pray and we're gonna go right into the message, amen. All right. Father God in heaven, thank you so much for this opportunity to come before you once again. Lord, this third installment, Lord, this heavy, this heavy word that you placed on my heart, I pray, I pray, Lord, that someone will have heard and will hear something that's going to help them along the way. Lord, we need thee, oh Lord. How we need thee in these last and evil days. Many people wilding out, many people going crazy over crazy things. And Lord, help us not to be those people. Help us not to lose our way. Help us, Lord, to represent you well. And we want to hear when it's all said and done, well done, good and faithful servant. That's all we want to hear once we get before your gates and once we have to leave the side of heaven. We want to hear you say, enter into my rest, you good and faithful servant. So Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We bind every spirit on the hand of the flow and operating of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So tonight we're going to talk about setting boundaries. Remember, we talked about difficult people. They could be obnoxious. They could be obtrusive. They could be uh, aggressive. They could be uh, uh, just people who can just work your last nerve. Matter of fact, they can work the last nerve, kill the nerve, resurrect the nerve, and start working on the nerve that resurrected. Amen. That's just how devilish and how uh, uh, diabolical some people can be. But we don't have to be those people. We do not have to return in kind the kind of attitude, the kind of stuff they give us. We do not have to, we do not have to do that. We do have a choice. Just because someone wants to come argumentative with me, I do not have to come argumentative with them. Just because someone wants to call me out on my name, I do not have to go back and return in kind. What I have to do is remember who I am in Christ. You see, boundaries help you to do that. I want to talk to you tonight. I want to talk to you about what boundaries are. I want to talk to you about establishing boundaries and the importance of why you should. Every single one of us, watch this, including God sets boundaries. God sets boundaries. I want to give you a biblical example before we go into the, to the meat of it, okay? So I want you to look at Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. First one, I'm going to try to take my time, but I know because I have a lot to say, I don't want to run over my words. You'll notice when I get excited, I, my, my, my brain is going faster than my mind. So I'm going to try to keep it calm, under control, so you can hear what I'm saying. All right? Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. I want to give you an example of what boundaries do. Amen? I'm not going to give you the historic context of this, but you should already know it. It's when the children of Israel were about to go into Jericho. God had given them a plan, 
And the people that were in beside, in beside or inside the walls, inside the city of Jericho, decided to respond in a certain way. This response helps us to understand how we can establish, how we can erect boundaries in our lives. How we can prohibit people from doing certain things and allowing certain things in our spirit. Because boundaries can help you emotionally, boundaries can help you spiritually, boundaries, boundaries can help you relationally, boundaries can even help you physically if we learn how to establish them. So first thing I want you to do again, Joshua chapter 6 verse 1, are you there? Okay, let's go. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred or straightly shut up. I'm reading from the NIV. Uh, they were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went, went out and no one came in. I want to stop there. They were straightly shut up or they were securely barred, meaning that they were tightly shut. Understand that the people who, who lived inside of Jericho Knowing that the people of God, the nomadic people, the ones who were coming into their territory after, after having heard about what their God can do, they became afraid of the people and they shut the gate. They shut the gate and they prohibited anyone from going in or anyone going out. Someone going out can leave the door open and someone can slip in. They knew that they had to make sure who was ever in was going to stay in. Whoever was out was going to stay out. Do you understand that that's essentially how boundaries work? You see, you, these, this, you have to set the, the, the stage. You have to set the boundary. No one else is going to set it for you. The people of Jericho set the set the the, the uh, uh, gates. They shut the gates. They they're the ones who made the decision. We're not going to let anyone come in or go out. When you decide to set a boundary, you cannot permit someone else to set it for you. Because if you try to if you wait for someone else to make a decision, say for instance, there's a person who wants to consistently come into your life. Bring all that mess, dump all that stuff on, on you, and then walk away expecting you to do something about what they just dumped. Listen to that for a minute. They dumped everything on you. I shared a story with, with the, with the uh, minister some time ago about a pastor who would have people come into his office, and they would come in and they would dump everything on him. And he said, it's like having a monkey in a room. The monkey will jump all over the place, or kick over stuff, knock bolts over. This is metaphorically now. They will knock everything over because their, their, their trauma and their, 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 the stuff that they're pouring into them is so traumatic that he, he, it's like having something come into your room and tear everything up. But he decided he would put a, he put a sign over his door as they were leaving and said, take your monkey with you. Take your monkey with you. In other words, don't dump all your problems. Don't dump all your stuff on me and expect for me to do something about the problems that you're going through. I can listen and I can pray. But even in listening sometimes, if I'm listening and you have determined not to do anything about what you're telling me, all you're doing is adding more to my problems. You're adding your stuff to my stuff, and I don't need it. So take your monkey with you. Every now and then you got to tell somebody that. Take that mess with you. I'm not going to hear you cry about the same thing over and over again because what you're doing is you're messing up my spirit. You're dumping all this negativity into me and I'm setting up boundaries. I'm shutting the door. I'm closing it off. I'm not going to let you in or anything that's in me out so that, so that you can go ahead and, and, and watch this damage me and keep me from being who God called me to be. Yeah. See, having a, a if I could do is use a geographical or geological uh, 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 terms uh, to help you to understand this. It's like having your own uh, a property line. It's like you buy a plot of land, you build a house on it, and you have neighbors. And your neighbors decide to infringe on, to encroach on your property. They keep putting more junk on your properties, bit by bit, little by little. There's more of, your, more of their stuff on your property than yours, than, than your stuff. And you go and tell them, look, you need to get your mess off my property. They can get mad all they want. They can sit here and cry all they want. They can say, I've been here longer than you. It doesn't matter. That's my property. Get it off. Every now and then, you got to tell someone, you got to take your mess, get this stuff off my property. You don't have a right to determine how I'm going to act or what I'm going to say or how I'm going to think. You don't have a right to determine how I feel. Amen, somebody. You see, essentially what those who come into our lives, these difficult people want to do, they want to control us. 
And many times we allow people through their negativity, through their abusive tempers, or through their abusive behavior, stuff they've done to you in the past when you were a little kid. You're still letting people in your past control your present situation, and it's time for you to set up a boundary. You can't come across this line. This is my property. You don't own it. Therefore, I'm not going to let you determine which direction I'm going in or how high I can go or, or any direction of my life. I'm not going to let you determine where I go and how I act. I have a God for that. I have a God for that. Amen. Let's look at this. Look at something else. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Be not unequally yoked. You've heard this before. Be not. Be not. Be that. Uh, uh, do not be that right there those words are boundary builders do not do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness what partnership does though you want to live righteous you want to live holy you want to live the way God called you to live you want to be that person that Jesus can count on in the, in the pinch you want to be that person that's growing growing in, in, in spiritually and emotionally. You're growing deeper in the Word. But then someone comes into your life who may have been a partner of yours in the past. Someone come along in your life who is a difficult individual who don't like the pro pro trajectory of your life, the trajectory of your life. They don't want to see you go any higher. So they come in and try to pull you down and they have, this is the word, where it's lawless, they have no boundaries. They do anything and try to pull you in and try to distract you and pull you in a different direction and tell you what you need Jesus for. Don't you notice how the devil works? The devil works with, well, well, look at over in, in, in Genesis chapter 3. God set up one boundary. Don't touch the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's what he told Adam and Eve. You remember that, right? Of course you do. He said, don't touch the tree. What did they do? Because at the suggestion of the enemy, the serpent, who is slick and crafty, at the suggestion, when he said that, oh, he's trying to hold something back for you, talking about God, God's trying to hold something back for you. See, this is what the enemy does. He trying to get you to feel like you're losing out on something, so then you go over the line, you trespass, you go in places you shouldn't, because you feel like somehow you're missing something, when God's given everything to, 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 to pick from, all the trees to pick from, all the fruit to pick from, all this, all these other areas they can go in and, and glean from, but instead, he had them focus on the one thing they couldn't have, and they crossed the line. God set up a boundary, and they decided to cross the line. God has boundaries, and he expects us to set up some too. Amen? Look what he says over here in Proverbs 25 and 17. Still talking about boundaries. Let your foot be seldom in your neighbor's house, lest he, he have his fill of you and hate you. That sounds kind of funny, but he's saying basically is that don't go over to your neighbor's house so much to the point where they get sick and tired of seeing you. Let there be boundaries. Know that, your, that that person has a life. That person has things they want to do. That things they have to get done. And if they have to stop to see about you, stop because you're complaining. Stop because you're whining. whining. Stop because you need them to pray for you again about the same situation that you're not willing to work out. He said, now stop going because eventually they're going to get so, they're going to get so sick of you, they may end up hating you. Mm. That's a hard word. That's the word. It's a hard word, but it's a, it's, that's the word. We have to be willing to understand that everybody has something they're going through. And they cannot always listen to my problems because by me dumping on my problems on them, I become that difficult person. Now, they're trying their best to be saved, to be, you know, we think it's something wrong to say, uh, no, I, I can't, I don't have time for this. No, uh, you pray for yourself. No, I don't have time to go ahead and, and cuddle you and, 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 and hold you up. I don't have time for that because I'm too busy trying to deal with this child of mine who's getting in trouble in school. I'm too busy trying to deal with my relationship that's falling apart. I'm still trying to handle my finances. I got all this stuff going on and mentally and emotionally. I'm stressed. I'm strapped. And here you come. You know who the you is. We already we always have somebody in our life that you that comes in want to take up time and place and space. Don't add anything to you. Matter of fact, you start you as soon as you start saying.
saying, yeah, yeah, kid, child, I hear you, I hear you. But you know what? I got some. Can I talk to you about something? I'm going through. And next thing you know, oh, you don't have time. You don't have time. Eh? They want you to hear everything they have to say, but I don't have time for you. You got to set up some boundaries. You got to set up some boundaries. You're going to give me some here. Okay? So, simply put, a boundary is your own personal, like I said, property line. It defines who you are, where you end, and where others begin. Notice that. It defines who you are, where you end, and where others begin. It refers to the truth, to reality, to what is. When you confront someone about a problem, you're setting a boundary. You say, look, this is an issue for me. This is a problem for me. The way you talk to me is a problem. You calling out my name is a problem. That I will not accept you calling me anything, talking any kind of way. That's you setting a boundary at that point. You're saying, I am not that person that you can just walk all over. Hear what I'm saying? In the time we live in, People are constantly trying to just usurp their authority or put your, your authority and push themselves into your life and try to overtake you. And, and, and many times because we're Christians, we're saying we want to be nice. Yeah, being nice is okay, but being, but being so foolish that you let people just run all over you, Jesus never told us to be a roadmap or a doormat. Have people just run all over you. We don't have to take that. I was so focused saying, wait a minute, I've never heard this before. It's the truth. Jesus was always Jesus. Jesus was the same one who, who washed the disciples' feet. But Jesus was the same one who also they a cord, a, a, a whip, went into the temple. Check out John chapter 2. Went into the temple, found out there were money changes in the temple. They were doing merchandise in the temple. They were doing all kind of exchange in the temple. They made, his, they made the temple a place of merchandise rather than a place of prayer. And Jesus said, no, this ain't going on in my father's house. So he took the whip and started, get everybody get out. Jesus was a bad somebody. He didn't play. He could be soft, but he could be hard when he had to be. He could be nice. Can take a child in his hand and say, this is what the kingdom of God is like. But at the same time, he can tell the, he can tell the, the Pharisees and religious leaders that you're nothing but like white and sour because you did nothing but in you but dead stuff. Dead men's bones. He had no problem. Why? Because the Bible says, if you check out John chapter 13, the Bible says before he took the took a, 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 off his robe and, and he took a, a, a towel and decided to wash the disciples' feet, it says that he knew what, who he was and where he was going. Jesus was fully acquainted with himself. He knew who he was. He knew he was God in the flesh. He knew he was 100% man, 100% God. And he had no problem humbling himself when he had to because he knew humbling himself did not make him any less of who he was. You see, we think sometimes if I let, if I humble myself, because sometimes I want to take humility to, to overcome some things, that somehow I'm being less of a man. If I let my wife have her way sometimes, I'm being less of a man. No, you, if you know who you are, you don't worry about that. But boundaries help you understand where you begin and where other people end. Boundaries help you understand who you are and what you're about. Boundary help you understand what is in your core, who you really are, and what you stand for, and what you want. Setting up boundaries are imperative. Matter of fact, many of us like to set up goals. We're going to establish this. We're going to do this by next year. We're going we're gonna to paint the house by this year. We're going we're gonna to make sure we get a new car by that, by that year. We're going to make sure we put money aside for, for college and all that stuff. But watch this. If you don't set boundaries up, you spend the money you're supposed to use on the house. You spend the money you're supposed to use on like, getting the kid through college. You spend the money on that new car beforehand because you don't control. Somebody say control. You don't control, you don't discipline yourself. And boundaries help you to discipline yourself. I'm moving on ahead, of my, I'm, I'm jumping on all over my notes right now. Boundaries help you to discipline yourself. When you set goals without boundaries, what's gonna happen is chances are you never reach your goal. Because you didn't set the boundaries to help ensure that you go and you get what you what you have what you're seeking after. Amen. Look what else it says. By the way, there's some very good material out there about boundaries. This is by no stretch of imagination am I exhausting this this topic. There's books out there by uh, uh, several people. One one in particular 
well, several in particular, by the two individuals. One, uh, doctors, Henry Cloud and John Townsend. They have a book, they, excuse me, they wrote years ago called Boundaries. Now that has morphed into Boundaries in Dating, Boundaries in Marriage, Boundaries in Leadership. There's several good books out there to talk about boundaries. Why? Because this is paramount. This is so important to your spiritual well-being that if you don't say it, you won't even know what your opinion is. If you don't, you won't even know what you, what, what you really think about a thing because everybody else will be pouring into you and you never take time to figure out what do you really want. Now I'm really jumping ahead of myself, but that's a part of it. Understand how to set boundaries. You have to know what you want. Right? Let me read this. You can set a boundary with your words, when you're honest, and when you establish a consequence, wow, a consequence for another another's hurtful actions. Boundaries help define who we are in our relationships. Listen to that. I'm going to just read this for now because we all going to jump into something. When we know what we want and do what we, and do not want, when we are when we are for what we are for against for and against what we love and hate. What is me and what is not me, we are setting boundaries. Let me read that again. When we know what we want and do not want, what we are for and against, what we love and hate, what is me and what is not me, we are setting boundaries. In other words, I have to know me well enough to know what I will allow in my life and what I won't. Can I use another example? Say you want to lose weight. You want to lose weight. You want to get in shape. You want to get the summertime coming. You know, you want to get yourself together. You want to get buffed again, right? Okay, cool. Listen, you know then you can't be having ice cream and cake every night. You got to, I'm not saying never, but you need to set up boundaries. You got to know that certain fools is going to go to work against you getting what you want. Going to work against you getting that weight off. Going to work against you getting that buff body back. That, that's something you have to understand. If I don't set up boundaries and I just go around with my, just, just, you know, just whatever goes, whatever, whatever comes up and whatever I feel like doing and don't discipline myself to be responsible to get what I want, then you end up with the same thing you always had. Hmm. And if I had, a, if I had a crowd here, I would ask you this question. Are you satisfied where you are? If you're not, maybe it's because, one, you haven't set goals, and two, you haven't set boundaries. Hmm. Let's move on. People with good boundaries are clear about their opinions, beliefs, and attitudes. In the way that Jesus taught, simply, over in Matthew 5.37, write that down, Matthew 5.37, Jesus said, Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Everything beyond that comes from the evil one. In other words, you don't have to you don't have to sit here and him hog, go back and forth. It's either yes or no. Either you want this or you don't. Now I know some circumstances call for you to sit down and say, okay, I don't fully understand everything that's going on, so you have to take time. And one of the aspects of one of the steps of getting to a, 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 a building boundaries is that you have to learn how to pray for understanding. We're gonna talk about that. Alright? So People with clear, without clear boundaries are unsure of their opinions, feelings, and beliefs. If you don't have clear boundaries, you really don't know what you want or how you feel. You really, people can move you any kind of way if you haven't set boundaries because their opinions become paramount in your life. Their opinions become, you know, let me hear what somebody else has to say. Let me get their opinion. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Before you know it, you're not living your life. You're living somebody else's. Parents are good for that. We can tell our kids this is what we expect. This is what we want. We want you to do this. We want to do this. But never taking time to figure out what the child what The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go, and he shall not go. He can always not depart from him. In other words, train them up in the pathway that God has already set before them. Help them to find out who, where God is taking them, and then, and then encourage them to go in that direction. Yeah, more on that in a minute. All right? Boundaries also help protect us from injury and harm. Setting boundaries, we, can, we take responsibility for the lives and the gifts God has given us. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Above all else, 
Go let your heart. We talked about this before. Go let your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. The well springs of life. Everything is seated in your heart. Your heart is a place of your emotions. The heart is a place of your will. The heart is a place of your decision making because you make things based on how you feel, not, not, not often what you know. Amen? So, so, so you got to guard your heart, and that's what individuals trying to do. The, the enemy, in particular, wants to attack your heart because if he has your heart, he can guide your life. If he has your heart, remember I said your heart, your will, your emotions, the decision making. If he has your heart, he can guide your life. So you send difficult people into your life to try to grapple your heart, to pull it in his direction. And God said, wait a minute, I sent the person in your life so you learn how to fight against that. Remember what we talked about. If you don't remember, go back a couple of weeks ago. Amen? Look at the tape. Uh, boundaries to protect our values, feelings, time, energy, and attitudes. Now here this, this is what boundaries do. When a person says to another, I want you to stop criticizing me in public, he's saying or she's saying, I'm putting up a protective boundary. You can't talk to me any way in front of your friends. You can't talk to me any way in front of these kids. You can't talk to me any way, even my boss on the job. You can't just say anything. I'm still a human being with, 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 with feelings and, and everything else that come along with being a human being. So you just can't, I'm putting up a protective boundary. I won't permit you to say that to me. I'm shutting the gate. You have to take responsibility for that because nobody else will. All right? We get ready to get into some good stuff, stuff. So just hold on here. All right? So God himself, as I said, God himself sets up boundaries. He designed them and lives them out. He is clear on who he is, what he is for, and what he is against. He is for relationships. He is for truth. He is for love. He is for honesty. He is against oppression, injustice, and sin, and evil. Isaiah 61 and 8. For the Lord love justice, hate robbery, and iniquity. God has clear boundaries. He knows who he is, what he wants, what he likes, what he dislikes. You know what? So many times we try to figure out the mind of God, the will of God. What God want me to do? What does he want me to do? If you read his word, you'll find out his will. You read his word, you'll find out his will. Once you know his will, you're going to follow his will because you know his word. Amen? God does not hide this. It's not, it's not something secret. When he says, I want you to be holy as I am holy, I want you to be set apart, different in the world, because I am clear. When he says, I want you to forgive, if you don't forgive, I can't forgive you. Amen. So that's clear. I understand. If I'm, if I'm walking around in unforgiveness, God is saying, I got to hold this weight over you. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't let you loose. I, can't, I got to still hold you accountable to the things you did. Now watch this. You try to hold somebody accountable to something, they walk away from you. Well, what happens when God has to hold you accountable to something? Ah. See, Pastor, can we get something good? Don't worry, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> and he said this. Look what Jesus said. Oh, in Matthew. Turn to Matthew 7. Matthew 7, 22 and 23. Matthew 7. Jesus sets boundaries. And this is one of the most scariest passages of scriptures in the word. He said this, many will say to me in that, on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles. Notice the, the external stuff they did. Uh, the stuff they had to do out to make it look like, you know, how spiritual they cast out demons and they prophesied and, 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 and they worked miracles. All this stuff that seemed so fantastic out of this, this outrageous stuff. And, and Jesus said this, and then I would declare, I never knew you. Party. Hold up. They cast out demons. Prophesied. Spoke in tongues. Did all this, this fantastic stuff, this stuff that's mind-blowing, miracle-working. And Jesus said, I never knew. The word never means never, no, not ever, at any moment, at any point, at any point in time. Present, past, or future, did I know you. Did I, in other words, I never had a relationship with you. But they used his name. 
There are folk right now, you look at some of these televangelists who like to get on and say the name of Jesus, and at the same time, they want to sell you prayer cloths. They want to sell this, this, this oil, water, but they, they also have this, the blood of Jesus in a bottle and whatnot, and want to sell it to you and all this jazz. They, they, they talk about they can, you know, they can raise the dead and make the blind see it. They want to do all this stuff in the name of Jesus, but at the same time, they walk, they, 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 they have their own, their own, they want to have their own jets, and they want to have their own uh, airports, they want to have their own, they, you know, they're, they're billionaires, and they're, and they're getting the money based on this stuff that they're selling to their people. The people are dying in the on, a, on a, in the pews while they're getting richer and fatter off the people that they're feeding the stuff to. Jesus said, I never knew you. When I first read that, I said, Lord, don't, I don't, I don't, no, I don't want to hear, uh, no, I, I, listen, if, if you just want me to sweep the floor and I'm in your will, I sweep the floor. You want me to what? Clean windows? I'm in a heartbeat if that's what you want me to do. And I'm in your will. As long as I'm having a relationship with you, I can hear your voice when I wake up in the middle of the night and something may trouble me. I can call on your name. When something's got me confused and frustrated and I'm angry about something, I can turn around turn my face to the wall and say, Lord, help me because this situation has trying to overtake me. I don't want to do something, say something that is will be contrary to you or hurt you or make you look bad. So therefore, I'm going to submit and surrender myself to you. So I never hear these words, I never knew you. And this is why he said, I never knew you. He said, listen to the day, had all that stuff wrong, casting out demons. They, they, were, they, were, they were miracle workers and prophesying, speaking in tongues, all that stuff, right? Okay, all that showy stuff. But Jesus said, I never knew you. Get away from me or depart from me. And think about it. Get away from me. Jesus said, get away from me. I never knew you. For you practice. Practice iniquity. You practice lawlessness. You know the word iniquity or lawlessness mean? It means that, that, that they were without law, without restraints. No boundaries. Clearly God expects us to sit boundaries. Let me move on. It's about self-control. Self-control. It's not about the difficult person right now. We've moved off there. we shifted from them. We're talking about you and I now. It's just us. It's about self-control. Amen. Biblically speaking, boundaries are related to self-control. The Bible commands us to control ourselves. Whereas our human nature desires to control others. Human nature. Think about when Eve ate from the fruit, ate other fruit. Some people say apple, the Bible said fruit. Amen. She turned and gave to her husband who was with her. Right? And then later on, the, the, the curse that came upon him was that the Lord said that you're, you're, you're going to have to submit to your husband. Though she won't want to. That's why there's conflict in the home. Because we have a we have we have the order out of order. It should be God first, man as the head of the household, and the wife being the support system, being the help me in this household. But watch this, the two work together, amen, as a unit. Amen. That he doesn't lord himself over her, but at the same time, she can't take control over him. Over him because the Bible lets us know that that's what Eve wanted to do. And when the subsequently after that wanted to take control and make their husband do certain things, well, the man's always butting against it. Why? Because it's a disorder. It's a disorder. We, by nature, want to control other people. And God's saying, no, that's not, that's not what it is. That's not what supposed to be all about. If my spirit, if my nature goes unchecked, I will run over people. You hear me? Run over folk. Look what the Bible says over in Titus chapter 2. Verse 11, 12. Titus chapter 2, verse 11, 12. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no, to say no, to say no to ungodliness and worldly possessions, or worldly passions, I'm sorry, worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. 
This world is out of control. People are doing whatever they want to do. There's some stuff I can't even mention as we see on YouTube and, 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 and the stuff they're doing on the TikTok and all this crazy stuff that's happening. We, we, we can't look at TV without certain commercials going on that will go ahead and vex our spirit. Amen. We live in a world that's out of control. Here's the problem. The church is also following the same dictates. It's time for you and I to remember that we're supposed to be representatives of a higher standard. We are supposed to be following the I am that I am, the creator of all things and sustainer of all things, the one who breathed life into all things, the one that had not been for him, nothing would exist. We're supposed to follow a higher standard. And many times because we want to appease people, Amen. We don't want to preach on certain things. Oh, I'm about to mess up now. We don't, I'm, this is my last class. We, we don't want to talk about certain things because we don't want people to watch this feel offended. Well, I'm not going to try to offend you on purpose, but if the Bible says to speak on something, I am accountable to what I'm supposed to say. And I'm not going to go ahead and get messed up, lose any kind of crowns, lose my joy, lose my peace, to try to please somebody who don't care enough to go ahead and change their life for Christ's sake. Sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I just lied. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. But I'm trying to help you understand. If people are not going to try to follow Christ, if they don't want to do the things that need that's necessary to, to please God, don't you try to please them? Be who you are. And know there's only one person you need to please, and that's the Lord himself. Amen, somebody. I'm working on being sweating now. <laughs> uh, personal boundaries help us to limit our selfish inclinations. Hear me now, because you can also have unhealthy boundaries. Healthy boundaries I'm trying to preserve who I am and follow God and be sure I'm doing the right thing and I I'm not letting you destroy me by me trying to please you. But an unhealthy balance when I start to form cliques. I don't want to let people in. I don't want to help people to get closer to God. I don't want to pray for, pray for nobody else. I want everybody praying for me. That I'm not concerned about the homeless. I'm not concerned about the sick. I'm not concerned about somebody's child who, 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 who's, who's going through. I'm not concerned about folk who, who have reached uh, hit uh, uh, some bad times in their life. And I act like, well, it's not me. I got mine, you get yours. God says, no, no, no. I told you before, the Lord allows the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. The sun to shine on the just, unjust and the just. God is a God who, when it comes down to not his salvation, but when it comes down to helping folk, he wants to be inclusive. Salvation, some don't believe this or don't accept it, but it is exclusive because there's only one way to get to Jesus. We talk about that some other time. But, but when it comes down to helping mankind, those who are sick and those who need help, Jesus said, you don't know, we might be entertaining angels by helping somebody who's down and out. When I see a person on the street and they, they're homeless, my heart breaks. This times I cry. Because I've seen someone in the cold and I have to stop and give them something to encourage them. Say, look, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Turn around. I hope a miracle's around the corner for you. I don't try to figure out what's that there because the drugs I don't matter how they got there. What matters is that that's a beautiful person who needs somebody to show some kind of love of God towards them. So there's boundaries that are healthy boundaries. But when we want to just forget about folk around us that are in desperate need of help, we are setting unhealthy boundaries. We want to set cliques, and it's just about me and mine and nobody else. We are setting, setting unhealthy boundaries. Amen? So, let's move on. Uh, Self-control is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Write down Galatians 5, 22-23. One of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. A believer who sees his need for self-control so he can take responsibility for his own actions. 
See, I can't keep blaming my wife. I can't blame my kids. I can't blame my mom. I can't blame my dad. I can't blame the boss. I can't blame the white man. I can't blame the black man. I can't blame the Asian man. I can't blame the people my stuff is messed up. I got to look at the man in the mirror and say, get yourself together, brother. You're the one who need to get it together because you're responsible for you. Yeah. Let me move on because focus ain't good. You know, some folk might be saying, man, you got to just get, keep moving. <laughs> a person with clear, healthy boundaries communicates to others what is and is not permissible. Saying, in effect, this is my jurisdiction. This is my area of control. The only one who is allowed to, to, to control me, move me, tell me what to do is Jesus himself. Amen. You know how some sisters get when a brother try to tell them what to do? You know what they say? Read my dad. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes, well, most of the time that works. It's like, all right, all right, let's go on about your business. Or you get into a deeper argument. What they're essentially saying is, try, stop trying to control me. You can't tell me what to do. See, when we left, when we leave our flesh unchecked, not under the direction of the Holy Spirit, we will seek to control other people. And in, in turn, people are trying to control you. I a long time, a long time ago broke those chains. I am not afraid to say no. I'm gonna talk to you about that in a minute. Alright? Hold on a second. We're about, we about to move because I don't have much time left. Um, Titus 3 and 10. As a person, Titus 3 and 10, write that down. As for a person who stirs up the vision. After warning him twice, once and, and then twice, have nothing more to do with him. Matter of fact, make sure you read Titus 9 to, through verse 12, to chapter 3, verse 9 through verse 12. Matter of fact, just read the whole chapter. But it talks about how when someone was stirred up the vision, when they wanted to cause separation, when someone was trying to go ahead and, and, and get you to, to talk about somebody else at the exclusion, at the, at, at the exclusion of that person, to, to, to put them down and not include them into your group. He said, if you see a person who wants to cause division, warn them once. I ain't playing that. No, no, no. That's not how we roll. And they keep doing it. Say, warn them twice. Two times. Give them twice. Maybe they'll turn around. He said, but if they keep doing it, it has nothing to do with it. Because you see, when you stay involved in a relationship where they're constantly talking about other people and causing division among the, particularly among the brethren, you're saying to them, you are in agreement. You may not even say anything. You're standing in the room. You're listening. You may not say anything to them about whether you like it or dislike it, but because you're there, you're saying, I approve. God is saying, Get away from them. Set some boundaries. James 5 and 12. Above all, above all my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no. It's just what Jesus said. Because everything else falls under the combination. In other words, have within you the understanding of who you are, what you're going to permit, what you're not going to permit, what is permissible, what is not permissible, what you want and what you don't want. You, by doing that, you can clearly set up boundaries in your life. So others, others' opinions won't affect you. Other opinions won't sway you. Other, pe other people talking trash won't push, push you in one direction or the other because you're focused. You're focused on what you want and the goals you have set in your life and God's purpose and plan for your life. Know what God wants for you, then you accept and receive and say, God, that's what you want for me, then I want it as well. And since you want this for me, I want this for me, I'm going to make sure I set up, set up boundaries and prevent somebody else from pulling me in a different direction. That's why he says don't be unequally yoked. Why? Because if you're unequally yoked, what happens when you're yoked up to somebody, if you're unequally yoked, they're going to pull you in, a, in the wrong direction. Amen. They're going to pull you in the wrong direction. Hmm. What direction is your life headed in? Is this God? Is it you or is it somebody else? Where, where are you headed? The Bible says over in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12, it says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Work out your own. You got to, you got to take it to his natural direction. The Bible says 
says over in Romans chapter 12, or chapter 8, verse 29, that we are being conformed into the image and likeness of Christ Jesus. Chapter 8, verse 28, 29. We are being conformed to the image and likeness of Christ Jesus. If I'm supposed to be looking like Jesus, this is what God is looking at. This is the will of God for my life that I'll be more like Christ. Then my best bet is to sit down, study the personality, the characteristics of who Jesus Christ is, so then I can ask God to help me to line up with what I know. Empower me to act like Jesus. But before I can be empowered to act like Jesus, I must know Jesus. I must study Jesus. I must spend time with Jesus. Amen? Let me move on. So now, also, this parenthetic, I'm going to say this while I'm moving to the next step. Set up parental boundaries. Mm. You see, if little, if, little, if, little, if little Jamie is telling you off at three, and you don't put, some, put, put something on that, put a lock on that, put some boundaries around that, when she becomes 13, you can't tell her nothing. I know people right now who a person told me about how their daughter cussed out her husband. I'm like, she's still living? <laughs> or at least she should be bruised. Something should happen. Because I know when I was a kid, if I ever even thought about it, if the thought was in my head, my dad would know what the thought was and not the thought out of my head. Amen. Today, we want to coddle our kids and we want to befriend our kids rather than parenting our kids. The Bible says, as, as I said before, uh, over in uh, Proverbs 22 6, the, in the NIV, it says, Start children off on the way they should go. And even when they're old, they will not turn, return, they will not turn from it. You have to know what God is doing. Pray over your children. Pray about your children. Pray, pray for your children. So that you can know how to raise them up so you, won't, so you won't cause them to go in a different direction because you're overbearing. You stress them out by, by, by trying to play something on them that they're not capable of doing or wait, ready for. Amen? So every now and then, when it comes down to setting boundaries, but also set boundaries with your older kids. You better set boundaries with older kids, your older children. When they're grown, I told my kids, when you have your own, that's when you're grown. We you have your own stuff, you're grown. But as long as you're in my house, you ain't grown enough to tell me what you ain't going to do. You ain't grown enough to tell me you're going to keep my room clean. You're not grown enough to tell me you're not going to take the trash out. You're not grown enough to tell me you're not going to wash dishes. I'm 20 years old. You're still in my house. You get, you either, you're going to do like I say, or get out. This is mine. I own this. This is my property now. Amen? And if you have, if you have, you have grown children who want to disrespect you, don't talk to you right, and then want you to take care of their kids. No, I'm sorry. Until you learn how to come in here with a civil tongue in your mouth, I'm not going to sit here and let you talk to me any kind of way, and then still expect me to do something for you. I love my grandkids, but I get the one I want. You don't push them on me because you got something you want to do. You want to go party, and then turn around and tell me to take care. I don't even know what I'm talking about. This. But we have to set boundaries. Because without them, we, what happens is your life will be gone. Your life will be messed up. You don't even know where your life went. Because we're too busy allowing other people to determine what we're going to do. You set plans. You're ready to go. You have in your head what you're going to do. You want to go out to dinner. You and a husband. You and a wife going out to dinner. And all of a sudden, here comes the kid, the grown kid, talking about, I need you to do this for me. Didn't even think about whether you had a plan or not. Didn't think about whether you were going anywhere. Didn't think, did not care anything. You just sitting at home. You don't know what it's going to do. Didn't call or nothing. Set boundaries. Before you come over here, call me. Before you make a decision, ask me if I'm available. Don't just assume anything about me. That's setting boundaries. Let me move on. Boundaries can help us fight the influence of the world. Boundaries can help us fight the influences of the world. Uh, write down 2 Corinthians 6.14. Right? Boundaries help us because, again, that we talked about fellowship you know, with the darkness. It, it helps us to set boundaries. Being, uh, being kind and friendly is Christ-like. 
but we are not to embrace the world's ways of doing things. I want, I, I, I want to reach people for the Lord. I want folk to be saved. That's a good thing. I want people that receive the gospel of Jesus Christ that will save their souls. I want to see them on their way to heaven. But if I have to, watch this, convert them by being more like them, going to the bars and hanging out and drinking, cussing and carrying on and acting like, you know, you know that's how we roll and we're good. No. Because now, you're no different. And how can you, and I said this one time before, how can you make a difference if you're not different? Look what he says here in James, chapter 4, verse 4. You adulterous people. Don't you know that fellowship with the world means enmity against God? If we're fellowshipping with the world, if we have, if we have if we unify with the world, we are actually an enemy of God. Therefore, anyone who chooses to be afraid of the world becomes an enemy of God. That's the, that's the scripture. I didn't say it. Bible me. Are we talking about boundaries to help you take responsibility for your own life? Are we talking about that? All right? So let's look. Let's look at, since I only have a few minutes left, let's look at the necessary steps it's going to take for you to start setting boundaries up. And then we're done. One, this might, this might shock you, but one, be prayerful. Be prayerful. James says, if anyone lacks wisdom, James 1 and 5, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given you. God will give you the wisdom and the strength. You see, setting boundaries are not easy because now you're basically saying, I'm changing how I used to do things. I'm changing and telling you you can't do what you want to do. I know I allowed this before, but this has been the thing that's been killing me, so I'm going to stop this, I'm not going to allow, well I'm trying to help you, I'm trying to help you be better, but at the same time you're killing me. So I'm going to set boundaries up and it's not going to be easy. Therefore you have to pray. Pray for the strength, pray for the wisdom, pray for the understanding, pray for the direction, pray for the power to set the direction, to set the boundaries. Establish what you want. I put the emphasis on you. What do you want? Because if you don't know what you want, other people will tell you what you're going to get. All right? So, it's time for you to determine what you other people have been pouring into you since you were a little child. Things have been done to you. You've been abused and misused. And it's terrible things that people have said about you. People have done to you. And now all that is in you. And you have not even discovered what do you really want. God is sending difficult people in your life to help you discover who you are by, by, by coming to him and saying, Lord, help me. I don't understand. I don't get this. And God said, when you sit down, talk to me. I want to reveal to you some things about you that you never knew. But you need to take the time to talk to me. It is really, it is, you can really just say no. You can say no. I'm not going to do that. Being saying no doesn't mean you're being, being selfish. Be, saying no doesn't mean you're not going to try to be helpful. But being no is not that you're, being, uh, that you're not being Christ-like. Saying no means that I, I, can't, I can't allow certain things to go on because those things are not leading me closer to God. It's not, it's not fulfilling the purpose and plans of God. Look what P Peter says. Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 4, 3, 3 to 5, for you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans chose to do. Living in debauchery, meaning you live you live your life, wow, you're crazy. Drugs, sex, everything. Just do whatever you want. Lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They are they, they are now surprised that you do not join them in that same recklessness. You decide you're gonna change your life. I'm not going in that direction no more. Now they're looking at you and saying, What's wrong with you? Oh, you better than somebody? You think you're better than us? I'm not better than you, but I just have a higher standard, as I said before, and I have a new direction. I have a new purpose, and I can't keep doing what I was doing to go to all of that purpose to be fulfilled. So if you don't like it, I'm sorry, but I'm not here to please you. I'm here to please the one who saved me, who watched me, who delivered me, who did re redeemed me. I don't have time to play games. I don't know when he's coming back, and I want to be ready for him. I'll be ready when he comes. I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. And if I, I got to please you and displease him, I'm sorry, I choose Jesus. We move on. Step three, only have four. 
Yeah, four. I have four. Uh, 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 step three. Be direct and clear. Don't be wishy-washy about your boundaries. You see, many people think because they're setting boundaries, uh, they, 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 they're setting boundaries in actuality, they're only making suggestions. Ah, uh, you know, I, I, I wish you called call before you come over. No, call me before you come over. Call me and make sure I can, I, that I, can, that I can, can talk to you. Call me and see if I have enough time. Don't just make the decision to show up. That's setting a hard, fast boundary. If you say, well, you know, I really appreciate if you call me before you show up. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't want. I, I don't mean you can't come over or nothing, but I'm just saying. They're like, please, I'm gonna come over when I get ready, because you're not being honest. You're being, you're, you're not being honest with yourself. You're not being honest with them. You're not. You, you might have to get dishonoring yourself. You're dishonoring the person. But you just sit here and say, oh, you know what? Uh, no. Be bold enough. The Bible says over in Proverbs 28 1, that the righteous are bold as lions, but the wicked flee with no man pursuing. But no man coming out of the day running. And the last thing, have your consequences ready and use them. If you do call me before you come over, when you come to the door, I'm not answering it. When you do call me and you expect me to do something for you, I'm not going to do it. And when they show up and they come over and they say, look, I need you. No, I told you, call me. I'm going my way out the door right now. See you when I, I see you later. Don't have goals or boundaries without there being some real consequences behind the, your, your boundaries. Because if not, it's a joke. It's like telling a child, I told you, Johnny told you to sit down. If you don't sit down, I'm not, you, you're not going to get any dessert tonight. Sit down, Johnny. Quit jumping all over the place, Johnny. Johnny, quit messing with me. Leave your sister alone, Johnny. Johnny, quit turning up the TV, Johnny. Quit, turn, quit turning stuff over, Johnny. Johnny, you'll do everything you want to do. At the end, when he finally eats his dinner, he turns around, Mom, can I have some ice cream? Well, sit down, Johnny, give you ice cream. You just told him that if he didn't do what you told him to do, you weren't going to give him any dessert. But guess what Johnny will learn? Johnny will learn that your word don't mean anything. Johnny will keep doing what he want to do, tearing up your stuff, and you're going to sit there and keep giving him dessert. Don't you realize that's what we do with people when we set, when we set boundaries but no consequences? We're basically saying, do what you want to do. Write down Ephesians 5, uh, Ephesians 4, 15. Because we're supposed to humbly come towards one another, humbly accept one another in love. But me loving you don't mean I have to stop loving me. See, the Bible says to love the Lord that God with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, with all their strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. How can I love my neighbor right if I don't love me? Loving me, me, I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to take care of you, but I have to love me first. Why do I have to love me first? Because I can't love you right if I don't know how to take care of me. It's like this, and I'm getting out of the way. Last example. You're on a plane. The story is telling you, if in case the cabin starts to lose pressure, what's going to happen is the oxygen is going to come down. If you have a child, do not put the cup on the child first. Put it on yourself. Why? Because if you take oxygen in for yourself and try to save the child, what's going to happen? Both you and the child will suffer because you won't be cognizant of your, you won't be able to go ahead and do anything because you'll lose consciousness and both you and the child could die. So you have to take care of yourself. If I'm going to be useful for the kingdom, I have to take care of myself. So I can be useful for God and the things he wants me to do. If I'm going to help someone else, I have to be willing to help me first. So God bless you. My time is up. This is the last class. I wish I had more time to talk to you. There's so much more. But God bless you. Please remember to follow us on Facebook and follow us on these other programs. And we want to make sure we just reach you wherever we can. So God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.